walkers all around your house. Who are you that's gonna get into position? I need some cover here, Dunny. Smoke the door. We got a fire. This will be our next customer right here. Please, please. They decide to hurt themselves. Well, I want to see a search one. You're not going to, because there isn't one. Why are you stopping? I mean, you drove up to it. You crashed. Right now, you're under arrest for being an idiot, OK? You mind? We don't need to be on the news. The most people that we're dealing with tonight are like yourself. You're very pro-police. This program contains actual police footage. No reporters, no recreations. On the road, straight down, five minutes. Okay, so the male was driving? Yes. Okay, how old would he be? Uh, I believe he's about 24, 25 years old. White male? Uh, yes. How tall? About 5.5. Five, or a little bigger. His hair? His, uh, They're gone. Yeah, running on foot. Hey, guys, got one over here for you. You want to keep these in? You want to stay back? Fatal? Yeah. Surrey Bravo 5. You've got Get every car back. you can out. I don't care what they're doing for a perimeter. We've got a, a 58 here. We'll need traffic, etc. cetera. Copy, you've got a male and a female. Which way did they go? Westbound 105. Is that westbound 105? 10-4. Bravo 9, go. That's why I pull ambulance. Can I get some time and take care of it to the kids for GOA? This one was uh, pretty much of a shock to us. We were uh, stopped right near 104 in the George and uh, talking to someone just as the call was coming in as the uh, report of a uh, possible impaired MVA, and uh, we were only about a quarter block away as we pulled up. Saw pretty much of a horrendous scene. There was a body, uh, a pedestrian that had been struck, uh, was obviously deceased. Uh, the body suffered uh, a great deal of trauma. And so now we're dealing with this as a crime scene. We've got the dog man out looking for the two people from the truck. We've got the area cordoned off, a traffic analyst coming out. We have every available car out doing patrols in the area and uh, setting up perimeter. And with any luck, we'll uh, find the people here in the area. If not, at least we'll be able to uh, initiate our investigation uh, along or pursuing the, uh, the registered owner of the truck and uh, try and go that route and see if we can identify the driver and uh, just deal with it as we go. We've been trying to uh, piece together what happened here. And based on what the uh, eyewitnesses said, and what the physical evidence is showing. It looks like the truck was northbound on King George Highway at a high rate of speed. As he reached 104A Avenue here, he probably uh, first hit this little traffic island and then continued on uh, northbound and drove right up onto the sidewalk. You can see this uh, light pole here. There's fresh damage to the wood. A mirror from the uh, truck is on the ground with the broken glass, and there's a few paint samples of that on the wood. The truck then continued northbound and somehow uh, avoided uh, hitting that light pole hard enough to stop him and avoided hitting this uh, parking sign on the left. It's probably right around here where the uh, pedestrian would have been standing. You can see his uh, hat just off in the parking lot, and the body was thrown up against the uh, sign here for the Money Mart. From that point, there's debris from the truck uh, strewn about, as well as uh, some objects from the body. We have the uh, fellow's wallet, some ID cards here, and the truck continued northbound, just clipped another truck that was parked here in the uh, auto dealership. You can see just a little bit of a paint scraping there on the uh, bumper of this truck that was parked. The truck continued north after taking out the uh, concrete uh, boulevard here. And once again, made it just between two fairly large poles, either, with, either of which could stop, stop the uh, truck dead and uh, avoid it from continuing further. 
but it managed to make it through and uh, went on another uh, 30 feet or so, at which point the two occupants bailed out and ran. It would appear that the truck was obviously going at a very high rate of, rate of speed. There's a lot of uh, damage to the truck. He uh, hit a lot of uh, smaller objects and managed to continue going. You can see uh, substantial damage to the passenger side of the uh, truck here at the front. And this would have been the area that first clipped the uh, light pole. There's a little bit of uh, possibly some blood up here on the uh, grill in front of the radiator. From this point, uh, the traffic analyst will be attending the scene. He'll uh, try and reconstruct the accident, determine exactly what had happened. Our ident section will attend, fingerprint the uh, vehicle, fingerprint some items that have been left behind and attempt to determine who was in the um, truck at the time of the accident. And also we'll uh, utilize some outside firms. Uh, there's engineering firms that we'll use that can uh, try and determine the exact uh, speed of the vehicle at the time of the accident. And they base that on the damage to the vehicle and also analyzing the debris left at the scene and the distance that it traveled after the collision. Other than the information that we'll be able to follow up on uh, as far as the registered owner of the vehicle, uh, probably our, our next best lead or avenue investigation will be this beer can that was left behind. Uh, hopefully there'll be fingerprints on it and our ident people will be able to uh, come up with a suspect for us from that. What did you see? You came down 104th Avenue? I came down 104th to turn, to turn right in King George. And uh, I saw the truck coming on the right, uh, right direction. Looks like uh, he was swerving all over. Yeah. And uh, and the boy walking on the sidewalk, and the truck hurt before the boy, and they catch the boy. The boy tried to run, no chance, and they flipped back to the truck. And after the the, uh, the truck go all the way around and stop there. They, he tried to pull back to run, no chance, because I, I was parked beside the truck. He, he tried to back up? Yeah, he tried to back up, and because my van parked beside the truck, and they don't got a chance to, to go, and uh, they run out, the boy, the, the male run out to the street, to the middle street. The, the girl takes about a couple, couple seconds, she looks for something inside the truck, and they cross the stick, they run out. So it was the guy that they was driving? They the boy. They got a beer can in his hand. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe a Pepsi, I believe it's a beer can in his hand. And they drop yeah, yeah, the car. They're they very drunk. Yeah, no, there's a beer can right there. Yeah, they're very drunk. So the fellow saw the truck coming and he tried to get out of the way, but uh, yeah, they came right up on the sidewalk and yeah. he didn't have a chance? No chance, no. Yeah, even I saw the boy run, try to run to this way. Mm -hmm. No chance, the truck always come comes it and what, when the truck catches the boy, the boy fled back, probably five feet back. Did it look like maybe they swerved at him or was it just because they were drunk and drove off the road? No, they're drunk, no, no. Yeah. I don't believe they, they didn't propose to kill him they, they, because he's drunk. Just because he's drunk. Yeah. Alcohol's a wonderful thing, eh? Oh, well, yeah. There should, there should be nobody drink when driving. Yeah, that's for sure. You know. Yeah, that's a big mess, you know. I wish, I wish the, the RCMP catch the, the driving, even the, the, the girl, you know. Yeah, no, well, because certainly we'll do our best to get them. This is the most tragic consequences of impaired driving and is a perfect example of why we place such an emphasis on drinking driving. There's going to be a, a family that's uh, pretty devastated this morning when we notify them that their son or that their brother has been killed. Um, a lot of people would be suggesting that it would have been much better off if the uh, driver had been killed rather than uh, the pedestrian, and I certainly can't disagree with that. You know, we, uh, we're out every night checking people at the bars, checking vehicles, and trying to put an end to drinking driving, but there's just too much of it going on, and it's, uh, for a lot of people, it's an accepted way of life, and uh, I think you don't have to see this too many times to, uh, to make you think twice about uh, having a drink than getting into a car and driving.
Yeah, just stand by. We're parked around the corner. It's uh, Burnaby stolen here. We're just going to stay here for a bit. That's for Bravo 41. You copy that? It's Burnaby stolen? Yeah, I don't want any JD cars to drive by uh, Balmoral anymore. Yeah, 41, I guess uh, 28 requesting uh, for you to just uh, stay out of sight for a bit. Burnaby 28, I think NERT's on tonight. Can you check their office? Sorry, who are you looking for there today? Special projects. They're on nights tonight. 10 4, do you want Echo 16 up there as well? Yeah, 10 4. The way they've left this vehicle, it's like they're just going to leave it there and uh, come back soon. The window's still open and there's people around. So tell whoever's coming up to come up Hall, right to the Middle Gate Mall at the rear and uh, not to go down uh, Balmoral because they'll see them. Okay, to haul just the rear of Middle Gate, eh? Yeah, we're parked in uh, the side there, kind of in the alcove where uh, they can't see us. But uh, if Special Projects is on, they might want to take over. And if F Echo 16's here, they might want to come up as well. Okay, 10 for it. Burnaby 28. Go ahead, 28. What was the description on the, uh, the girl? Uh, I called the complainant back, and he states that it was a white female, yeah. got short blonde hair with brown roots. She's in her late 20s. She was wearing a blue jeans with a t-shirt. He can't remember the color. She was talking to a male uh, before she left the vehicle, yeah. and the male was in a beige uh, station wagon. That guy took off in the station wagon, and the last uh, known 20 for the female was uh, there should be a white picnic table there, and there's a balcony. She went inside that suite. 10-4, the way she's left the vehicle, it looks like she's going to be coming back out, so we'll give it a bit, and if she doesn't, then we can go in and nab her in the apartment. Yeah, you're kind of broken up at the end, uh, but I understand you wait till she comes back out. Copy. What the call is, is a, a citizen saw a vehicle pull up in front of oh, an apartment in uh, South Burnaby. Woman well, got out and apparently wrapped something the around the back? steering wheel. Yeah, which is usually indicative of uh, them and trying to hide the fact that right it's, it's been punched, the ignition, or it's cracked, and it's a stolen. So we have drove by casually, ran the plate. Sure enough, it's a Burnaby stolen. Uh, we have a description of the uh, person. What we're going to do is set up here, uh, wait out of sight, hope that the uh, person who happens to be female comes back, and then um, um, grab her before she uh, gets the car in motion, trying to avoid a chase. Okay, 10 we're just VCB on her head now, and she's, uh, okay, we got her. She's walking uh, southbound on the uh, west side of the street, and she's just uh, just kind of ten uh, standing in the middle of the road on uh, Arcola, and uh, we'll be talking to her here for a second. I stole a car? No, your possession is stolen property. Right. What's that is? means that your possession is something that is stolen. The car is parked in front of you, the parked there. Okay, we'll explain it to you in the law. Okay, come on up to the police car here. You know what you're under arrest for? No, I don't. Yeah. So, um, okay, I'll put you in the car. I'll be right back, Steve. You're being arrested for possession of stolen property, okay? What property? We saw you get out of that vehicle and it's stolen. What vehicle? The vehicle up here, we saw you got out a couple hours ago. I got out of no. a station wagon. You got any needles or anything no, sharp in here I I'm going to stick of, myself with? No, no, I got out of a station wagon. Okay. You sure, eh? No needles? Yes, I'm positive. I know the apartment and the other hooker and the John's in there right now. Mm -hmm. Might be, Ra's over there, it might be a good idea to go in and uh, knock on the door too, because, uh, and check the John and her out. I got more information from this guy about her. She's apparently a heroin dealer, and she's got it in a lot of times she has okay, it in the apartment. Well, if you drive by to, to the stolen with me, I'll show you where it is. Do okay, well, you know what the unit number is? No, oh, you okay. can see which apartment, but I can't tell. Okay, okay. we'll just go and check it out. Yeah, you just, uh, you were just in here with a prostitute not two minutes ago, and you just walked out. And uh, what we want to do is find out which apartment you went to, okay? No. And then, what's that? No, I didn't have ID. No. no, you did. Yeah, you did. We saw you come in here with a prostitute not uh, five minutes ago. Yeah, who was the girl you were with then? Do you know her? Is she a friend of yours? I don't even know. Yeah, we, we saw you go in with her just about uh, five minutes ago. You want to step out of the vehicle for me, please? Is that your mom? Susie. Oh. Yeah. Susie, you have some friends here today. 
Is she in there today? Yeah. How come you guys are out in the hall? Huh? Who's that? It's the police. You kids, come here for a minute. How come you're out here by yourself? We always, sometimes I come to answer the door. Open up or we're kicking the door in. Well, hurry Put up. On. Put some on. She's getting rid of it. Hurry up. Open. You here alone? Yeah. Yeah? What? John's left, eh? Who's John? You're John. It's a generic name. Oh, okay. Hello? Yeah, who is this? Oh, gee, Matt, this is the RCMP. Your wife's busy for a while. No, he's upstairs in babysat. Yeah. Oh, well, she's just having a bad night. No, no. You can call her later, okay? Oh. Yeah, I know. But you can't talk to her right now. Okay. That was uh, Matt in the phone. He said he'll call you tomorrow. I can't call him. Okay, what's going on? There's a heroin head. Right. Okay. Yeah, well, no, it was on the fridge. It's not mine. There was a girl No, of course not. Here. What's her name? Um, Lisa. She and just, she's a friend of yours? She just got ready here and left. And she's in the back of my car now. Yeah, because she just got, and I knew, knew something was up there. That's why I got it. Huh, babe? Where'd you get the blood? The blood? Roll up your sleeves. I have some real concerns, one about the kids. So Steve's upstairs by himself. Here he comes back. Found some heroin. I'd like to get the dog in to do a search. And then she, she's just shot up, so we're probably going to have to take her back, too. Um, just let me talk to Steve here for a minute, and then I'll let you know. Steve, do you want to talk to me for a minute? Have a seat at the table like I told you to. Okay, I'm sorry. Have a seat at the table. I'm sorry, you asked me Table. Table. OK. Can I answer my phone? No, have a seat at the table. Okay, what is my son, like, should I yeah. my son? No, not yet. Have a seat at the table. I'll get to you in a minute, okay? Okay. Okay. All right, I have, I have no Okay, the kids are upstairs with him. Okay, they're going to be okay yeah. in your uh, estimation because yeah, yeah, I'm worried? Yeah, I okay. fine up there, so. We're going to arrest her for possession. Sure. And um, Kathy's going to take her back, too. And then uh, the dog's going to come and have a look around just in case there's more. At least we can flush it down the toilet there. And the lady that we arrested walking down the street uh, was uh, described to us by a, a witness as the person that had been driving the stolen vehicle. Uh, so we arrested her. Previous to that, a prostitute and her uh, customer had arrived and gone into the apartment while we were conducting surveillance in the area. We then found out that there were some children in the apartment as well, and we were kind of concerned that uh, somebody would be turning tricks in an apartment with children present. When we went into the apartment building, we found the kids in the hallway, and mom, I guess, was just inside uh, cleaning up. So when we knocked on the door, she let us in, and uh, she also had some heroin in her hand at the time. Um, we're going to be giving her a, a promise to appear to show up in court at a later date. Uh, the kids are going to be staying with a neighbor upstairs who uh, will provide a, a healthy environment for the kids. And uh, we'll be taking our uh, lady who stole the, or who was driving the stolen vehicle back to the office uh, to be held for court in the morning. Incidentally, the woman in the apartment uh, that we're giving the promise to appear to right now, uh, her husband is presently in custody in Matsqui Penitentiary serving time for getting in a high-speed chase and injuring a Delta police officer uh, about uh, eight or nine months ago. So it kind of looks like it runs in the family. We're uh, heading to a call at the uh, SkyTrain station at Royal Oak. Transit police are uh, holding a suspect they've arrested there, and apparently he's uh, given them a bit of a problem. What's he doing? He refused to show his uh, proof of payment. So we asked him to get off the train, and he wasn't cooperative. He ended up being pepper sprayed. Oh, okay. Oh, hold it. Get out of my car. I have to search you, okay? You don't have to search you. You got no right. You don't have any. Just relax, okay? You don't have a right to do anything. I mean, I'm asleep on the sky train. This is what I get. You know, I always... 
I always talk favorably of you guys. What, what's your name? You don't have to tell you. Well, you do actually. Well, you do actually. You know what's your name? Well, you don't have to ask. You didn't have to ask me anything. You just handcuffed me. What's your name? Well, you just handcuffed me without mm -hmm. asking me anything. Right? Well, you, you, I'll tell you right now, you're not going to get out of jail until you give us your name, okay? You are unhandcuffed. I mean, I, I'm under, I'm just writing on a skype Mm-hmm. What right and do you, you and have to And you've been arrested, okay? Can you, you tell me. Well, I didn't arrest you. Well, you tell but me. But I'm sure, I'm right sure they'll tell you. Essentially, the SkyTrain uh, constable asked uh, the fellow for proof of payment. He was sleeping on the SkyTrain, and um, he uh, was verbally abusive, refused to come up with proof of payment, and then was asked to leave the train. He refused to do so, and then was uh, physically taken off the train, was resisting, and uh, so the SkyTrain constable uh, had to uh, pepper spray the, the man. That's why he's, he's in pain right now. Well, man, I got nothing to do with the handcuffs, but I'm going to try and get rid of this thing in your I, eyes, I okay? It doesn't matter. How's your health? Listen, I got a ticket to be on the sky well, man, well, I'm not going to get into I, that. How's your well, health? I, uh, do you want some help or not? No, man? I don't want it. Do you want me to give you a nice no, damn cloth here Listen, so that you can I don't, take it? I just want my lawyer. I, I, I mean, I don't believe this. I got a ticket to get on the sky train. I'm, I'm on the What's your, what's your first name? Okay. Come on, man. Here's something nice and wet. Oh, ah. Here's something nice and wet. It's going to go right on the eyes. It'll feel good, man. It'll feel good. Okay? I'm a so peace officer uh, for SkyTrain, okay? Sir, I just... Get to go home. Listen, are you going to listen to me? No, You're not going to listen to me? Okay, well, I'm going to read it to you anyways, okay? Right now, you are under arrest for obstruction of a peace officer. It is my duty to inform you that you have the right to retain and instruct counsel without delay. You may call any lawyer you want. There's a 24-hour telephone service available which provides a legal aid to the lawyer who can give you legal advice. This advice is given without charge, and the lawyer can explain the legal aid plan to you. If you wish to contact a legal aid duty lawyer, I can provide you with a telephone number. Do you understand? You don't understand. Listen, it's very simple, okay? You're on the train. I boarded. I woke you up. I asked you for a ticket. You became verbally abusive. I asked you to get off the train at the next station. Again, you became verbally abusive. Okay? And then you got physical. And you got spray. As long as he's being diligent, he's fine. But he just sat there. So he's been arrested for obstruction, obstruction under criminal. Peace officer. Okay. And in this case, because I ended up having to spray him uh, six or seven times before he finally no. got, got control of him, I'm going to go ahead with uh, obstruction charges. Okay. Have you ever been in trouble before? Yeah. Who hasn't been in trouble? Okay. Listen. The, the rules are, I've got to put the cuffs on, I'll put them in front so you can hold the thing on, to your face, okay? I do have to put cuffs on. Well, I'm telling you I do. Listen, listen, I'm telling you I do, okay? You, you, well, look at Sydney. I don't want to argue with you. I, I took the cards off. I you got to put handcuffs on me because... I, I never put the handcuffs on you. Be, I, listen to I me, listen to me. Okay? Give me a break. No. These are the rules there, Sydney. I, I, I Is that loose? You, you got been handcuffed on the guy because he fell asleep on the train. There, it's nice and loose. And they want a guy to go and take a sky train. I, I just don't. There you go. You're gonna come back to the Burnaby detachment, and, and we're gonna uh, listen. Did they find my ticket. I don't know what happened on the sky train. I'm just I don't, know, to I don't well, know either. Well, I don't know either, but obviously you have listen to me. Listen to me for a minute. Listen to me for a minute. You've had a little bit too much to drink here, okay? I didn't have too much. Well, I can I smell some alcohol on you, okay? Oh, sure, I've had a few drinks. Okay, well, all I'm going to do is I fell asleep on the sky well, train. If you Somebody don't, if, woke me up. If there's no and, point and, in me talking to you here, handcuff. listen to me. You're going to go back to the office, get some fingerprints and a picture taken, and uh, once that's done, no, we'll see about no, getting no, you out not. of there, okay? No, I'm not. What do you mean, no, you're not? Why, why should I? Well, okay. If you want to be the tough guy and not cooperate here, no, then you're going to stay oh, in jail for the rest it, of the night. Hold it. I, I, 
I, I just happened to fall asleep on the sky train. Well, listen, I don't know what happened on the sky train. I wasn't at the sky train, okay? So why, why, I'm telling you, you've been arrested by, uh, by a policeman, whole, okay? Uh, I thought in Canada you were innocent to prove guilty. Well, you'll have your day in court, here, here, okay? Here, you'll have your day in court, okay? Guilty already before. Okay. Prison. You want to serve him, and we'll get out of here. that something may have happened. Uh, we've got a couple of fellas walking along the shore doing the same thing, so we're just gonna have to see if we can come up with something. Get you guys to clear the area one side or the other, please. received a call of a male, possibly uh, a drowning victim, just off Skana, Skaha Lake Beach. Uh, made attempts to uh, locate the person on shore. Uh, the beach was quite crowded. We had to uh, evacuate part of the beach, cordon off the area. A d diver from Penticton Detachment has just gone in the water. Uh, it's approximately 15 feet of water where the person has uh, allegedly went in. And uh, we're just waiting to see what the divers come up with. Deep was it? 
be out here, Frank. How about the wharf, uh, Great Less uh, Panic? Yeah, 10-4, just do a little uh, send the ambulance that way. 10-4. Put a few sobering thoughts in the people. Out of the swimming area! It's been uh, about 12 minutes since the diver went down. He, uh, re he has recovered the body of a, a male gentleman. And uh, we're just bringing him to shore now, and the ambulance service can uh, take him to the uh, the morgue and the coroner can examine the uh, body once it gets there. Anybody walking? Because when James is walking, all of a sudden he just yeah, oh yeah, it it just, off there. It's, it's steep when it drops off, but it only drops off like five or six feet at a time, and, or seven yeah. feet at a time. And... We've brought the uh, body of the uh, male that drowned up on shore. Uh, the coroner is going to be taking a look at uh, the uh, subject. 
It just uh, goes to show that it doesn't take a great amount of water uh, to uh, hurt or kill somebody. And um, safety always has to be number one when uh, playing in water. You know, it, yeah, results like this can be painful for families and friends for years to come. What we're responding to right now is a call, unconscious person in a vehicle, and the vehicle is engulfed in flames. We're, we're responding as well as uh, the ambulance and I believe a traffic car. So it's under these circumstances, it's important that we make it there as soon as possible to help out the victim. Just beer? Too much just beer? beer? You guys too have much a beer and stuff like that. Sure. I'm talking to friends. Beer and, and margarita have, coolers. Uh, like yes, not, how many did she have tonight? Oh, she's Keep had her. what? We had about ten beer. Uh, ten beer? All night long. Yeah, all night. Whose car is this? From uh, that's my car. That's her. So she and it's her car too. Type no, of deal. That's my car. Are you coming along with this lady? Yes. So okay. Yeah, I guess it's her car too. Well, but anyway, she sat in the car. Uh huh. Right. And I went in the back here with the yeah. guy. Yes. Again, right. Yes. And all of a sudden, Sean comes up the fence and says, "There's a fire in your car." Uh huh. So I come I'm running out. I put my, as you can see, I put my fist through the window. You saved her life. Opened up the door, unlocked it, and we both pulled her out. Mm -hmm. And this uh, lady here actually did mouth to mouth. That's and my that. sister. Yeah. She's did yeah. mouth Was the uh, young lady breathing? Because so she got her going. she got her going. Was she breathing? No. No. She had a pulse. It was all smoke in the car. Yeah. It was all smoke yeah. and fire. Yeah. When did she go out to the car? Uh, uh, about a half hour, I guess. Yeah, she was out there yeah. for about 25 minutes. Yeah. About okay. 25 yeah. minutes, and she's then Do you want me to take this proceeded file? to burn paper in the car. Yeah. I can take it and go to the hospital, whatever you want. Yeah. All right. So anyway, it's like... So she's in good hands right now. Oh, you yeah. can relax. Yeah. The ambulance oh, yeah. is here. They're going to look after her. She has been threatened. This stuff on me before. Before, She's threatened over, suicide oh, before? Oh, yeah. She keeps saying, you leave me, I'm going to kill myself, right? You know, I think it was a good idea. Obviously, she has some psychological problems. Yes, that's what the people here are telling me. Are you going to maybe take her to the mental health clinic? How did I do this? All right. Well, first of all, she's going to want to have help. She's right. going go, gonna to go to the hospital tonight, and yeah. obviously, uh, they'll look after her. Right. And she may want to see her. That they may uh, put her in contact with a psychiatrist. <laughs> All right. All right. But she needs some help. Okay. Right. She can be there overnight. Can she be kept there overnight? I would. I would assume she's going to be kept there for observation at least till tomorrow. Okay. Uh, how so about maybe if you, you make arrangements, I show up in the morning. All you got to do is show up in the morning. I'm staying here right. tonight. Show up in the morning, early in the morning. Right. Talk, go to the emergency department. Emergency department. Right. Talk to the nurses. Tell them who you are. Explain right. your concerns. Yeah. And, and tell them that you tried to end her life here by lighting the car on exactly. fire and stuff right. like that. As you can see that. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, and tell them that she should be talking to a psychiatrist yeah, or a doctor. I, well, so they, they may put her in the psych ward to, uh, to uh, figure observation, out. Observation, right? Because observation, yeah, absolutely. Because I, I've been wanting to leave her, and there's just threats going on, right, and all this stuff, and I don't need this. Yeah. Well, you know, down, so I'm sitting here having a few drinks, mm -hmm. and then bang, the fire's in How long had she been in the car before you uh, broke well, the window? It was about 25, 20 minutes. How long okay, was she in the car? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks, Bill. How long was she in the car, would you say, before the fire started? Uh, a good half hour. Good half yeah. hour. Right. What's your name, Bill? Last name? Thank you. It'd be about 25 minutes, half an hour, she was in the car, I guess. Yeah, right? And yeah. about the last Oh, we kicked her out of the house. Actually, yeah. like, the last was the fire minutes. going pretty good when uh, Well, it wasn't really a no, big it fire. It wasn't a, but there was a lot of smoke. Yeah, I appreciate that. Somebody's seen a light. And that's when we... Uh, 
my that's when they per, those two proceeded to break the windows out and then my help to pull her out to this way. Yeah. And, I broke and she wasn't really breathing too no, much. She wasn't breathing at all at that time. That's good. I mean, it's not good that she wasn't breathing, but it's good that uh, the nurse came along and helped her out. And it's good that you guys came along at the right time. Well, I noticed the fire and I thought, and that's as soon as I, and then I jumped, oh, sorry. It's okay, I jumped out of the fence. Yeah. And that's when we all came running out. Did she make any mention of it? Did she mention that she was going to do this? No, she was just upset. Like they have a lot of us got to do is the booze. Oh, exactly. Uh, about 95% of it. Yeah. Um, did she mention? Uh, no, she was there a fight between them? Well, there was an argument. Not really yeah. no fight or abuse of anything yeah. of that sort. Just arguing. Sure. Because what it all started out, believe it or not, his cousin's in there. Yeah. Uh, she's a female. They were out by the back of the shed talking. And she came out and accused him of all this, which caused an argument. And then she was asked to go out to the car and sit out in the car and wait for him to leave or whatever. All right. And then she sat down and proceeded to do what she did. Aren't you loving common law, you told me, Dennis? No, no, I said that she's with my girlfriend, I said. She's been my girlfriend for a year and a half. But you're living common law with the girl that was in the off car here? On, yeah, oh. off and on. Like, I go down and spend a night or two, but I, spend, I live with my mom and dad. So I see. That's where I live. Yeah. Her date of birth is June 15th, 1990. Oh, yeah, you're a bug on that, aren't you? <laughs> That's a, it was a trick question. Yeah, well, I, I, he asked me when her birth was. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to bug me on that, no. All right, she's, hey, in, she's in good hands. Show up at the hospital tomorrow. Okay. Will you dance? And talk to uh, the nurse. Uh, yeah. Serena Memorial, that's where she's going. Look you bet that. I know, I know. Well, it's a small price to pay to save somebody's yeah, life, isn't it? I know, I know. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Buddy. All right. Good night. Okay, good night. I wonder what that license plate is supposed to really be on when it's wired on there like that. Maybe. Dennis, why is your uh, license plate wired on like this? Why? Because I can't find enough bolts to put it on with. I don't know. <laughs> Does it belong in this car? Yeah. Are the registrations handy? If they're not on fire. <laughs> All right. Is that necessary or what? I, yeah, I just want to take just want to take a quick uh, look at your registrations, please. That's the fact that there's a totally different license plate on the front of the car. Sounds like a traffic file for me. Not unless it's moving. <laughs> I cut myself Yeah, the reason I'm asking, Dennis, is that you got two different plates on the vehicle. Your brother. I live here. You look like the only normal person in this house. Hey. Normal? Wait a second here. See, look at that. They have thrown your cigarettes at the police? <laughs> I would assume that this plate doesn't belong in this car. No. That would be my guess. What does it belong to? Huh? What well, does the plate belong? does, but uh, the plate is for a friend's car, and he lent me the plate because I just bought the car. So You're driving with no insurance, Dennis. Yes, I know, and I won't be so driving tonight. I'll where, take the plates no, off. No, no, no. Where time. would you like the car towed to? How about in the yard here? And he brings the truck out here. Well, if you uh, push it and not drive it, push I'll it on the yard. And the truck goes here. And, and if, I, uh, no. if I catch you driving that, that's no I'll insurance. Do you understand drive. that? Yes. All right. Hey, John. Hey, I, hey, don't worry about it, Dennis. Yeah. If my car can't leave because of an impaired charge, yours ain't going Listen. nowhere. Exactly. So I got to put this, this in there and the truck's got to come out get here. Get a sober driver to move that truck out of the driveway. I will. Get, right. get I these uh, Neanderthals to push this car into the driveway. Yeah. All right. And the car's not to move until you get proper insurance yes. behind a tow truck. Yes. You I understand? Hear. Yes. And I caught you driving, you'd be looking at a $300 yes, fine. I know. I All right? Know. I don't need no more well, trouble. You have a lot of problems. You <laughs> yes. do. All right. Good night. Okay. Good night, guys. I'll be checking on a little later. Okay. Join All right. I thought uh, what the hall at 104 at uh, 132 there, 134 at last two. You're welcome. Thanks. Were they having right. a barbecue? Come on, let's push it. Come on, let's get the truck all. Oh, they got to move the first thing. Oh, okay. Just give it a few minutes, but I'll be checking on it later. And Dennis, I'm also going to do a broadcast to all the other cars in Surrey to be on the lookout if that car moves. Oh, I know. No, it ain't moving. I'm spending the night here. Right. When are you going to get insurance on it? Huh? Monday morning? First thing no, Monday morning? Well, no, it'll stay here until I get insurance. I'll all right. Pass down. All right. <laughs> what what happened in this file here is we responded to a car engulfed in flames. A female was locked inside of it. When we got here, the fire was out. It was a very minor fire. The seat uh, sustained maybe a 5% burn on it and uh, she was passed out on the lawn. Uh, she was rescued, if you can call it that, by uh, one of her, her boyfriend's uh, friends. And uh, what is the combination of uh, too much liquor tonight and um, 
and the fact that she had a fight with her boyfriend, she tried to end her life here in her car. And uh, you could see the condition everybody was in. The biggest problem they had tonight is they're all drunk. The young lady will be taken to the hospital and kept there for observation. And she'll probably be released after a psychiatrist talks to her about what she tried to do here tonight. Okay, if you hit my car, you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> you think you're in trouble now? Be a part. Yeah, but that was it.